All right, hey folks, um, we're going to talk about Newton's laws of motion today. Um, there are going to be three videos. First one is on Newton's first law, second one's on the second law, third one's on the third law. Um, so we're just going to, hopefully each one's only going to take a fairly short time, but I thought if we broke them up in little bits like that, it would be easier to uh, access later. All right, so Newton's first law is all about something called inertia. Most of us have probably heard that term, um, and, and I think it's, for the most part, it's used correctly. All right, so basically Newton's first law says this. An object at rest will remain at rest. An object in motion will remain in motion at a constant velocity unless an unbalanced force acts on it. All right, so in other words, things keep doing what they're already doing. All right, so if something is sitting here, if this water bottle is sitting here at rest, then it's going to stay there until an unbalanced force acts on it. Right now there are forces acting on it. I'm pulling it up and, weight, and its weight is pulling it down. But there's no unbalanced force, so it just stays where it is. Right? If I pull with a force greater than the weight, it'll accelerate upwards. If I let it go, then there's only weight acting on it, and it'll fall. Right? And just a reminder, force, you know, um, it's a simple definition, but all a force is is a push or a pull. Just make sure that we know. All right, so what is inertia? Inertia is the tendency of an object to resist a change in motion, right? So it's, it's or the tendency of an object not to accelerate, right? So the more inertia something has, the more it tends to stay right where it is or continue doing what it's doing. Think of a big Mack truck. Mack truck at rest is going to be hard to get it moving. If it's already moving, it's really hard to make it stop. Right. What effect does mass have on inertia? The greater the mass, the greater the inertia. Basically, mass is a measure of an object's inertia. Right. Heavier object in motion, an object with more mass is going to be more difficult to stop, or it's going to be more difficult to get moving if it's already at rest. Right. So, simple question. A fly and an 18-wheeler are both moving at 15 miles per hour. Which one would you rather be hit by? Even though being hit by a fly is kind of gross, you're not going to get smushed. Right, so the fly would be much rather get hit. Right, would you rather have to move an empty file cabinet or one that's full of stuff? Okay, again, the empty file cabinet, less inertia, easier to start moving, need less force. <clears throat> if an object is moving, its tendency is to keep moving in a straight line path. Key word there. Right, so if I launch a baseball, throw a baseball at an angle, or launch a cannonball, right, why do they? tend to follow a path like that. And the reason is because gravity. Gravity, if you remember, gravity is the only force acting on it. If it wasn't, then this baseball would just go off in a straight line and never, and never stop going. This cannonball would just go off in a straight line. Right? But the reason the path is curved is because gravity is an unbalanced force and it pulls it downwards. Right, so if I toss an object where there's no friction, right, it will move forever. Right, it'll be great if you can get out in the, in the deep outer space away from everything, and I just start something moving. It's just going to keep going in a, in a straight line forever and ever and ever until something acts on it. Right, a continual application of force is not needed in order to keep an object moving. Right, so here's if the absence of gravity. This is what a cannonball would do. Okay, it would just keep going straight. All right, you don't have to continue applying a force. So, if it's not, if a continual application force is not needed, then why do you need to keep your foot on the accelerator to keep your car moving forward? Well, what's on your car? All right, when you're driving your car, you know, stick ever stick your hand out the window, you know, there's air resistance, right? So, you have to overcome that. The, the car has to apply enough force forward. To keep it moving in a straight line so there's air resistance and then of course there's friction as well because if you take your foot off the accelerator you're going to come to a stop all right a couple of quick ideas weight versus mass this is an important different differentiation right mass is the amount of matter in an object the amount of inertia that it has okay it's the amount of stuff if you want to say it like that Right, that is the same anywhere. It never 
change is as long as you don't change the amount of stuff. Right? The weight is the force due to gravity. Okay? It depends on where you are. Right? If you're on the Earth's surface, then it's pretty much the same everywhere. But if you go to another planet, you go to the moon, um, or even if you actually just go well above the surface of the Earth, the gravity force changes, and so the weight is going to change. Okay. Here's the equation. You might want to um, circle that in your notes. All right. The force of weight, sometimes people will just write it as W, okay, or sometimes F of G, the force of gravity. But the force of weight is the object's mass measured in kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity, which we already know is 9.8 meters per second squared. We're not going to use the negative sign, though we do understand that it's downward, right? That weight always acts downwards. But when we talk about somebody's weight, we don't say that it's negative. So it's just the mass times 9.8 if you're on the Earth's surface. If you were on Jupiter or on the moon, that G value would be different. All right, so example, what's the weight of a 15 kilogram object on the Earth? So FW equals m times g that's going to be equal to 15 times 9.8 or 147 newtons let's talk quickly about the units of force all right so the and you might want to write this um, off to the side in your note somewhere but um we said the force of weight is mass times gravity the unit for mass we said is kilograms the unit for acceleration is meters per second squared so that shows me that the units for the units for force a kilogram meters per second squared right or we give it a new name we call that sorry newton okay so newtons and we usually just write it as an n right and of course the newton is named after sir isaac all right, let's do another one. What is the mass of a 100 newton object on the Earth? All right, so we still have force of weight equals m times g. This time it's going to be 100 equals m times 9.8. And of course, we divide both sides by 9.8. And we get our mass being equal to 100 divided by 9.8. Looks like right around 10. 10.2 kilograms. All right, pretty straightforward. All right. This you'll see a similar type of equation when we start talking about general forces when we do the second law in the next video. Okay, if you go to another planet, do you have the same mass when you go to another planet? Do you have the same amount of stuff? Yes. Do you have the same weight? No, unless the gravity is exactly the same. You go to the moon, you weigh one six. You go to Jupiter, you weigh a little bit more than two and a half. You go into deep outer space where there's no sun, no planet, no anything, you weigh nothing. But that's a long, you have to be really away from anything, any gravity forces at all. All right, now next we're going to talk about Newton's second law in the next video.